Cooling curves. In this nugget, we're going to investigate how substances cool. Let's look at this beaker of hot water. We're going to take its temperature as it cools. Notice we're plotting it directly onto the graph rather than writing a results table because it's a bit quicker. We're taking the temperature every five minutes. And let's draw a line through that. So, what's happened? At the start, our beaker cooled very quickly. Heat is transferred faster if there's a larger temperature difference. The gradient of the slope is steep. As the temperature difference decreases, as the beaker of water gets closer to room temperature, the rate decreases, the beaker cools less quickly, and the graph gets less steep. The beaker stops cooling when it's the same temperature as the room. We call this thermal equilibrium. What would you see if we used a beaker that was colder than the room? Well, it would heat up, like this. As you can see, it follows a similar pattern. It heats up quickly to start and stops heating up when it reaches thermal equilibrium. What would happen if we used a different substance rather than a beaker of water? Different substances cool at different rates. Some will be faster than others. Conductors such as metals will transfer heat more quickly and so cool down and heat up at a faster rate, but they will all reach thermal equilibrium with the room. To summarise. Energy is transferred by heating from a hot object to a cold object. An object will cool down quicker if the temperature difference is larger, so the rate of cooling will decrease until the object has the same temperature as its surroundings. If an object has the same temperature as its surroundings, there'll be no heat transfer, and we call this thermal equilibrium. Different materials will cool down at different rates. Metals and conductors will cool down more quickly than insulators. And our keywords, thermal equilibrium, when two objects are at the same temperature and there's no heat transfer between them.